Hey guys, hope you're all having a great day. In this video, we are going to be going over every official flower in all 50 US states. We've got an interesting mix of flowers here for today. Some actually, certain states have the same flower, and there's many that are only for one state. I'm going to be going over them in alphabetical order, so if you want to see your particular state, if you do live in the US, I have chapters down below just mixed up into different sections, but they're in alphabetical order so you can find your state that way. So. And then I just wanted to mention too, instead of just making this a quick list where I just run down, here's the state, here's the flower, here's the state, here's the flower, we'd have a really quick video. So I wanted to spice it up a little bit. So I have four pieces for each state that I'm going to be mentioning. The first thing is gonna be the name of the flower, pretty obvious. Um, second is gonna be the hardiness zones. Now I actually have a video talking about hardiness zones if you're not too familiar with them. I'll link that in the description down below. But basically hardiness zones just say either what cold or heat tolerance plants tend to have more focusing on the cold tolerance. Uh, next thing is going to be the year that it was adopted. And then just some sort of an interesting fact in relation to it. Most of the facts that I put was just how that flower came to be, why that was the one that was chosen. Uh, but there's a couple interesting things that are mixed in here. Okay, first up on the list is Alabama. Their state flower is the camellia. The camellia is hardy in zones 7 through 10, and the year that it was adopted was 1959. An interesting fact about it is that Governor John Patterson was urged by his butler's wife to have an official state flower, and that's how it came to be. The second state is Alaska. The name of their official flower is the Alpine Forget-Me-Not. It's hardy in zones 4 through 8 and was adopted in 1949. And this was chosen because it is actually a symbol of the state's pioneers who arrived before 1900. Third on the list is Arizona. Their state flower is the saguaro cactus blossom, which is hardy in zones 8 through 11 and was adopted in the year 1931. Interesting fact about the saguaro cactus is that they're actually only native to the Sonoran Desert. So it makes sense why you would want to have that as the state flower for Arizona. Fourth on the list is Arkansas. Their state flower is the apple blossom flower, which is hardy in generally zones four through seven, and it was adopted in the year 1901. Now what's interesting about Arkansas is at the time, Arkansas was a major apple producing state. The town of Lincoln hosts the annual Arkansas Apple Festival. I guess they really like apples. Next up on the list is the great state of California. I've actually got my sweatshirt on right here. Their state flower is the California poppy. It's hardy in zones eight through 10, it was adopted in 1903, and an interesting fact about California, April 6th is California Poppy Day. So if you want to go visit the state, it's probably the best week to go. Next is Colorado. Their state flower is the Rocky Mountain Columbine. It's hardy in zones 3 through 9 and was adopted in 1899, so before 1900. This is an interesting fact about Colorado. To protect this flower, in any public space, you cannot pick more than 25 buds, blossoms, and stems in a day. So you actually can pick this flower in the state of Colorado, but only so much of it. All right, next up is Connecticut. Their state flower is the mountain laurel, which is actually more of a shrub. Um, it's hardy in zones five through nine, was adopted in 1907. And an interesting fact, 3,000 women signed a petition to endorse this as the state flower. I guess a lot of people really like the mountain laurel. Next up is Delaware, the second smallest state. Their state flower is the peach blossom. It's hardy generally in zones four through nine and was adopted in 1895. I think that was one of the earliest ones on our list. Now, an interesting fact about Delaware, at the time, around 1895, there were more than 800,000 peach trees throughout the state. And that's a pretty small state, so that kind of says something about Delaware. They really like their peaches. All right, next up is Florida. Theirs is, of course, the orange blossom. It's hardy in zones 9 through 11, and was adopted in the year 1909. And I think one of the main reasons why they chose this is that it has one of the most fragrant flowers. If you ever get a chance to smell an orange blossom, lemon blossom, lime blossom, any of those citrus, they have a very, very fragrant flower and it really just perfumes the air when you're around it. All right, next up is Georgia. Their state flower is the Cherokee Rose, which is hardy in zones seven through nine and was adopted in 1916. An interesting fact about Georgia is that this plant was widely distributed by the Cherokee indigenous group, hence why it got its name. Next up is Hawaii. Now, please forgive me if I do pronounce this incorrectly, but their state flower is called Pua Alo Alo, which is more commonly known as a yellow hibiscus. It's hardy in zones 10 through 12 and was adopted in the year 1988. However, 
I will mention the fact I have for this state is that at statehood in 1959, any type of hibiscus was the state symbol. It just wasn't until 1988 that the yellow hibiscus became that more specific symbol. So if you did see anything about the state symbols for Hawaii from 1959 to 1988, you may have seen a lot of red hibiscus, and that's not necessarily incorrect. It's just that now it specifically is the yellow one. Next state is Idaho. So their state flower is called Lewis Mock Orange, also known as Syringa, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's hardy in zones four through eight and was adopted in the year 1931. Now what's interesting about this state is that the variety Lewisii, which is more of the botanical name, it actually honors Meriwether Lewis from the Lewis and Clark expedition. And Lewis had this plant in his journal. Next up is Illinois. Their state flower is the violet, which you will see a couple more times on this list. It's hardy in zones three through eight and was adopted in the year 1908. An interesting fact about Illinois is that school children actually voted on their favorite flower and the winner became the state flower. So everybody liked the violet. Next up is Indiana. Their state flower is the peony, which is hardy in zones three through eight and was adopted in 1957. An interesting fact is that zinnias actually used to be the state flower from 1931 to 1957, but now the peony has been used on many grave sites for Memorial Day and just eventually became adopted as their official flower. Next state is Iowa, which their state flower is the wild prairie rose, and that is hardy in zones three through nine. It was adopted in the year 1897, and what's interesting about Iowa is that this flower was one of the decorations used on the silver service which the state presented to the battleship USS Iowa that same year. Weird to think of a battleship with Iowa, a landlocked state. Kind of interesting, but that's how it came to be. Next up is Kansas. Their state flower is the wild native sunflower. It's hardy in zones 2 through 11 and was adopted in the year 1903. This plant has actually been domesticated for 3,000 years, and Lewis and Clark mentioned this plant in their journals as they pass by. So Lewis and Clark mentioned a few different plants in their journal on this list. Next state is Kentucky. Their state flower is the goldenrod. It's hardy in zones two through eight and was adopted in 1926. Interesting fact is that bluegrass used to be the state flower until gardening clubs actually complained that it only represented one region of the state, whereas goldenrod grew throughout the entire state. So better off to represent the entire state. Next is Louisiana. Their state flower, which is a beautiful flower in my opinion, is the Southern Magnolia. Hardy in zones six through 10 and was adopted in 1900. Interesting fact is that there were thousands of Southern Magnolias throughout the state and their abundance just made sense as their state flower. You pretty much can go anywhere in Louisiana and find a Southern Magnolia. All right, next up is Maine, which this I gotta say is probably the most odd state flower that they have. Theirs is not so much a regular flower, but actually a white pine cone and tassel. Of course, that'd have to be Maine that does that. So the Eastern white pine, which is where this pine cone comes from, is hardy in zones three through seven, and they adopted this in 1895. Maine was commonly referred to as the pine tree state, and the Eastern white pine is considered to be the largest conifer in the Northeast. Next up is Maryland. Their state flower is the black eyed Susan, which is hardy in zones three through 10, which is kind of crazy to say because you can grow that in almost any part of the United States. It was adopted in 1918 and the yellow and black colors of the flower match the colors of the Calvert family crest, which were also the colors of the state flag. So it just made sense for that state. All right, moving on to Massachusetts. Their state flower is the Mayflower, which is also known as the ground laurel and it's hardy in zones three through nine. It was adopted in 1918 and this was actually another state where school children chose between the Mayflower and the water lily, and the Mayflower ended up winning by a ratio of two to one. So quite a landslide for the Mayflower. Next is Michigan. Their state flower is the crabapple blossom, which is hardy in zones four through seven and was adapted in 1897. This is a very fragrant native plant to the area and Michigan is one of the top producing apple states. So just to clear up any confusion, the apple and crab apple have basically identical blossoms. There's not much of a difference. Crab apple is native, but they do produce a lot of domesticated apples as well. All right, next up is Minnesota or Minnesota, as some people say. Their state flower is the pink and white lady slipper, which is only hardy in zones two through five, which that was quite crazy to me. Uh, it was adopted in 1902. And what's really weird about this plant is that these plants can take up to 16 years to produce their first flowers and the plants can live up to 50 years. This plant has been protected since 1925 and it is totally illegal to pick flowers or uproot any of these plants. You have to leave them alone. It makes sense why if it takes them 16 years to flower. All right, next up is Mississippi, which they also have the Southern Magnolia as their state flower. 
Again, Hardy and Zone 6 through 10. Theirs was adopted in 1900. And an interesting fact is that this flower was also decided by school children by submitting votes. This flower went up against Cotton Blossoms and Cape Jasmine, and it actually won by a landslide. No surprise there. You'll notice there's a few other states where they did actually have school children vote. Okay, Missouri is next with their state flower as the white hawthorn blossom. This plant is hardy in zones 7 through 11 and was adopted in 1923. There's approximately 75 different species of hawthorn that are found in Missouri, but the white hawthorn is most commonly found in southern Missouri. Moving on to Montana, their state flower is the bitterroot, which is hardy in zones 4 through 8 and was adopted in 1895. Another interesting fact, here we go with Lewis and Clark again. Um, they wrote about the vibrant colors of these flowers on their exploration, but indigenous tribes also use these roots for food and trade. They are too bitter to eat on their own, but when they are cooked and mixed with berries or meat, makes for a pretty tasty meal. Okay, moving on to the end, starting with Nebraska, their state flower is the goldenrod. Again, hardy in zones 2 through 8 and was established in 1895. Now, as this plant was decided, there's actually multiple varieties of goldenrod that grow throughout the state, and then they mention this quote, to foster a feeling of pride and stimulate an interest in the history and traditions of the Commonwealth. So take with that what you will. Next up is Nevada. Their state flower is the sagebrush. Hardy in zones four through nine and was established in 1917. This plant was decided as it is very apparent to the area. This plant is extremely drought tolerant and much of Nevada has a dry climate that has very sandy soil. Not many plants will grow well in this area naturally, but this plant does flourish in that climate. I can tell you being to Nevada myself in those mountains, it's sagebrush and juniper. That's pretty much all you find, so it's the perfect plant for this. All right, moving on to the East Coast, we've got New Hampshire. Their state flower is the purple lilac, hardy in zones three through eight, and was established in 1919. So this plant was first brought to New Hampshire from England and planted at the governor's house in 1750. It was ultimately chosen as the state flower because, they use this quote, it is symbolic of that hardy character of the men and women of the granite state, which being to New Hampshire many times, I can certainly tell you that. If you didn't happen to know, their state motto is live free or die. So I think that really says something. All right, New Jersey is next with their state flower once again as the violet, hardy in zones three through eight, and that was established in 1971. Now what's weird about New Jersey is that the violet was tried as the state flower multiple times, but wasn't ever official until 1971. They tried the first time in 1913, again in 1914, and then again in 1963, with all times just ending with an uncertain status. In 1971, it was finally official. Next up is New Mexico with their state flower as the yucca flower. Hardy in zones 5 through 11, this was established in 1927. The yucca flower was selected by the school children of New Mexico and was recommended by the New Mexico Federation of Women's Clubs. Early settlers also called them Our Lord's Candles. Quite interesting. All right, we got New York next, and their state flower is, of course, the rose. Hardy in zones 5 through 10, and this was established in 1955. So in 1890, school children were encouraged to vote for a flower, but those results were never posted. It took 60 years, but the legislature decided to choose the rose. There's a lot of cultural significance with the rose in all parts of the world, so roses are a very special flower. Anywhere from Shakespeare, to tarot cards, to a war of roses in England in the 1400s, there's a lot that's happened with the rose over time, so it makes sense that of any state, New York would choose that as their state flower. Next up is North Carolina. Their state flower is the American dogwood. Hardy in zones five through nine, this was established in 1941. The dogwood is one of the most prevalent trees in the state and you can find it in any part of North Carolina. There are also five festivals in the state that celebrate the dogwood. So they really like the dogwood tree there. All right, next is North Dakota with the wild prairie rose as their state flower. It's hardy in zones three through nine and was adopted in 1907. This was a wild rose that grows very prevalent in North Dakota, and you can find it in pastures and meadows. So different from a lot of hybrid roses that you see nowadays, this one you can find just growing in the plains of North Dakota. Next up is Ohio with the Scarlet Carnation as their state flower. It's hardy in zones 7 through 10 and was adopted in 1904. So William McKinley wanted a token of love and reverence for the Ohio president. He mentioned that English countries have certain flowers that awaken the hearts of the natives, and he wanted to adopt the Scarlet Carnation to do the same. Next up is Oklahoma with the Oklahoma Rose as their state flower. Hardy in zone seven through 10, this was adopted in 2004. So before the Oklahoma Rose, the mistletoe was the state floral emblem. And this rose actually is a hybrid that can produce up to 50 petals per flower. So they kind of updated their state flower with this Oklahoma Rose. 
Next up is Oregon with the Oregon grape as their state flower. Hardy and zones five through nine and was adopted in 1899. So this plant is native to much of the Pacific coast and it was decided by the Oregon Horticultural Society. The other plants that were voted on while they were choosing one included the Madrone, Wake Robin, Bearded Gallardia, and the Washington Lily. Next up is Pennsylvania with once again the Mountain Laurel as their state flower, hardy in zones five through nine and was adopted in 1933. The woodlands in Pennsylvania are filled with this flower that blooms in mid-June, and it also is an evergreen. So because you'll find it so often, that's why they chose it. Next up is the smallest state on our list, which is Rhode Island, which is also the state that I happen to live in. So their state flower is the violet, which was hardy in zones three through eight, and was adopted in 1968. School children voted on this plant in 1897, but it wasn't officially adopted until 1968. And Rhode Island was actually the last state to adopt a state flower, so... Way to go, Rhode Island. I just wanted to make one more comment on this. I feel like it actually makes the most sense to have the rhododendron as the Rhode Island state flower, considering that the nickname of it is called Rhodey and we're Lil Rhodey. So I don't know, I just wanted to put that out there. Next, we've got South Carolina and their state flower is the yellow jessamine. This is hardy in zones seven through nine and was established in 1924. So this vine was chosen because you can find it in every single part of South Carolina and it is usually known as the first sign of spring along with its strong fragrance and delicate gold flowers. Next we got South Dakota on the list with the American Pasque flower. This is hardy in zones 4 through 8 and was established in 1903. This plant does grow wild throughout the state and just like the jessamine it's actually one of the first signs of spring in South Dakota. Getting close to the end of this list here we got Tennessee next which this is quite an interesting state. Um, their state flower is the iris, hardy in zones 5 through 9, and was adopted in 1933. Out of all iris, the purple iris is the most commonly accepted state flower. However, Tennessee actually does have two other state flowers. One is the passion flower, and the other is the echinacea. So those, the passion flower and echinacea are actually wild flowers, and then the iris is like a cultivated state flower. So kind of interesting that they have three on their list. All right, we got the great state of Texas next with the blue bonnet as their state flower, hardy in zones three through eight, and was established in 1901. This plant is actually only found more in the central and southern parts of Texas, but it blooms in early spring and the petals look like a woman's sunbonnet. We've got Utah next with the sago lily as their state flower, hardy in zones three through eight, and was adopted in 1911. Between 1840 and 1851, food became very scarce in Utah due to a plague of crickets that ate the crops. Families learned to dig for and eat the roots of sago lily, so you can say that this flower was kind of like a saving grace for those people. Okay, next up is Vermont with the red clover as their state flower. Hardy in zones three through nine, this was adopted in 1895. Now what's interesting is the red clover is very symbolic of Vermont's scenic countryside, but it's not native to Vermont. It's actually native to Europe, but eventually naturalized throughout the entire state. Next up is Virginia with the American dogwood, hardy in zones five through nine, and this plant was adopted in 1918. Part of the significance with the Virginia state flower was how Thomas Jefferson loved trees, and in his estate that he lived in in Virginia, he actually had quite a number of dogwood trees. Next up is Washington with the coast rhododendron as their state flower. This is hardy in zones five through eight and was established in 1893. There were six flowers that were considered for the Washington state flower, but the largest competition was between the clover and the rhododendron. Women in Washington actually went to booths and voted for it, and the rhododendron won. All right, we're down to the last three plants on our list. We got West Virginia next with a regular rhododendron. This is a little bit of a different variety than the coast rhododendron. Hardy in zones three through seven. This was established in 1903. This was another state that had public schools vote on the state flower, but the governor also recommended the plant for the state flower at the time. We've got Wisconsin next with once again, the violet. This was the most common plant on this list. Hardy in zones three through seven. This was adopted in 1909. It was the only flower to have four different states selected as the state flower, but it's very common throughout much of the Eastern United States, so it makes sense. This was another flower that was voted on, which was up against the wild rose, trailing arbutus, and the white water lily. And we have made it to the last state on our list with Wyoming. This is the Indian paintbrush, hardy in zones four through eight, and was established in 1917. So these flowers are actually pretty inconspicuous, but the bright red bracts of the inflorescences are what tend to stand out. So you're not actually looking at the flowers when you see the color in the plant, but rather the bracts that grow on those inflorescences. So quite interesting that it grows that way. All right, so we have made it to the end of our list. That was all 50 states. 
Um, once again, let me know what state you live in if you feel comfortable sharing. Um, I'm curious to see where everybody's coming from and if you do happen to like the state flower or have it in your own yard. Besides that, I hope you guys like this video and I will see you in the next one.